this will be my first like official video. So this will be my first official video with the Gurney Skirt. Ah! What is going on y'all? How are y'all doing today? Listen, you probably noticed something a little different, a little new. We got a green screen now. We're uptown. Baby, listen, we are getting ready. We are going to put this content out in 2024 and it is going to be amazing. Do you understand me? So I wanted to upgrade a little bit. I'm not going to show y'all my little microphone stand thingy because that will take too much effort and I'm not going to do all of that. Uh, but I'm telling you, it is like, I'm so excited. We got this we got a whole new setup. We got a whole new thing that we're doing, a whole new vibe we're going for. So I, what I am hoping is that in 2024, going into 2024, we, we, we try to elevate a little bit. I'm hoping that the content reflects that. I'm hoping that the content lets you know, like, we we going to try some different stuff. So I figured if we got a new setup, we might as well use it to talk about something that I want to talk about. We might as well use it to talk about something that is important to me, something that I feel like we need to know about. And what else than Wicked City season two, right? So I went back and forth because I was like, well, maybe I want to make a charmed video, but I realized I have not been making the Wicked City content that I need to be making. And I'm not going to neglect my girls like that. I'm not going to play in their face because Wicked City season two was so, so very good. Y'all, there will be spoilers in this video. So if you don't want to hear that, then I'm letting you know right now. Just click off because uh, I can't talk about the season the way I want to if I'm trying to avoid certain things. So I'm giving you a warning. And if you watch past this... <laughs> baby that's on you <laughs> now I do want to say something kind of off rip and I want to make this clear like from the very get-go that what I'm gonna say in this video is me giving I don't want to use the word critique because I'm not like a movie critic or whatever or film critic or tv critic why do I keep saying movie and film? you know what I'm talking about so what I want to make very clear from the jump so that no one thinks I'm trying to say like, oh, season one was trash and this season. No, what I'm going to be given are my thoughts about season two, the good things that I will probably change a little bit, what worked and what didn't, in my opinion. I do want to make it clear that I think season two was really good. And when I say that it was a, a big improvement over season one, that's not me putting season one down saying, oh, season one was just so horrible, it's unwatchable, because I don't think that's the case. If that's the case, I wouldn't have watched season two. So for me, I want to make that clear because I want, it, I want us to have that good foundation of where I'm coming from, because I want us to know, like, I'm in it. I'm in this world. I'm with these characters and whatnot. So... With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Get it? Got it. Good. So, I know I said earlier that season two was a big improvement over season one for me. And, and that's in a very good way. I think one of the things that really helped them this season is that we got a chance to focus on relationships more than one person. And with any good story, I feel like the way people interact with the even the environment with things around them with people around them is gonna make or break and give you a good or a bad season and what I think works so well about this season is that we really got a chance to focus on the relationships of the characters not just between themselves but with the people that were kind of coming from the outside and joining the cast so i'm talking about darlitra i'm talking about javi even julius to a certain extent even claudette like even though claudette was part of the main cast in season one i feel like season two she gets to have more of a presence where she gets to interact with them as opposed to everyone just kind of like quivering in fear because oh my god Claudette oh Claudette's here Claudette 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 and season two really gave us the opportunity to get to know the characters and get to know how they view each other now I will get to it later but I think Jordan <laughs> I feel like Jordan takes a little bit of a hit this season not in a 
I, I don't know whether it's good or bad. I really don't know how I feel about it. And while I was like writing out my thoughts and putting them down so that that way I could have a guide, I just, I don't know. I still go back and forth. I feel like we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Let me, let me stop jumping the gun. <laughs> so I want to go back to Claudette for a second because I think that Claudette's arc this season was one of redemption but <laughs> I feel like the redemption was a little maybe uneven in places because it's like okay she did this to Tabitha in season one she you know took her away from their perspective she killed me um she killed her and it's weird because Claudette so her and Angela start to kind of bond a little bit and Angela is the one that's defending her and then we get this like other betrayal that went even like even deeper than her killing Tabitha and it's like I feel like Claudette made the mess and then <laughs> and then got a chance to be part of fixing it I, I don't know it's I'm I'm on the fence about her um her redemption arc because I love me some Claudette and I love the fact that her and Caden this season were able to really make up. I I just I go back I I I'm I'm gonna have to go back do another rewatch of season two and I feel like then I'll be able to give probably a little bit more in depth clarity on my views about her redemption because. At parts, it felt a little rushed, and then it felt like she was unredeemed and then redeemed again. So, in the end, I definitely think that she got the redemption. I just think the road to getting there was a little, you know, wonky. But I will say this I do think that that is part of what you get when you have a very short season. Now, they had two extra episodes. Season two had two extra episodes over season one. So they did have a little bit more time to flesh characters out, and they did have a little bit more time for us to get better views into them. I just think that when you have a short, short season, you still have to jam-pack a lot of stuff into that one season. So that's why I'm a little bit more understanding of why we maybe had to move the way we did because we really don't have time for like a I fell down after my redemption and then got back up thing. we really don't have time for that in an eight episode season so I do think that they did the writers did a good job with what they had so take that for what you will so y'all in season two it kicks off and we see what everyone's been going through for the past couple of months Claudette has hidden Camille away Angela and Jordan are the only two left in the um in their apartment. Mona's moved out of state. Sharice is with the handler, so she's still in captivity. Like, there's a lot happening this season. And then we see Jordan kind of getting close to this man named Javi, and they, they started dating. But my favorite thing that happens, baby, listen, is Angela. Because one thing about it, two things about it for sure. Angela... The, the character of Angela was at the forefront this season. And I low-key stand. I low-key stand. Because I think that Angela was a good anchor to the story that I wasn't really expecting. I liked the character last season. You know, Jordan and Sharice are my favorite. You know, especially. This is no shade, but you know, especially Sharice. Sharice is definitely like my favorite. But, <laughs> but I think that Angela helped to anchor the story because she was... To me, a lot like what I think they were going for with Tabitha, because I think Tabitha was supposed to be the cement that held them together. She was supposed to be the foundation and she was supposed to have that loving, caring relationship with everyone. And she did. But I feel like Angela, for some reason, and I can't figure out what I can't figure out why. There's a there's a lot of things about this season that I can't quite figure out why I feel the way I do about it or I can't put my finger specifically on what it is. But with Angela, I feel like she's more relatable in a way that Tabitha kind of wasn't. And I think I think as I'm talking this out, it may be because 
Tabitha was a, a little bit more removed from the story. Because, you know, she had her own thing going on with Caden and Claudette. And she was trying to figure out the whole Kendria situation and what happened there. And she's kind of unraveling her own little mystery as we're going along. So it kind of felt like she wasn't part of the story at times. Whereas I feel like Angela is in it to win it. And so we she's a little bit more relatable because we know that she has personal investment in this. And she's not just trying to solve her own mystery. She's trying to help Darlitra. She's trying to help find Sharice. She's helping Jordan keep it together. Like Angela has her hand directly in so many things. And I really, really think Angela, they found a really sweet spot. And they, I think they did really good to make Angela the glue of this show. It, because that character is just so, okay, because Jordan, Jordan could be the glue, I think, later on down the line. But I think Jordan still has a lot to work through as far as her mania, honestly. That might not have been a good choice of words, but she she's kind of, that's why I identify with Jordan a lot. Because Jordan like goes up to here with every single thing. And I think that for right now where they're at, they don't need that kind of being at like the helm. Right now, they need someone who's more level-headed, who can think. They need someone who's willing to say, okay, we don't trust Claudette, but we're going to work with Claudette because we need to accomplish this goal. Okay, you may not like Darlitra, but we need Darlitra's power because we are trying to accomplish this goal. Whereas I feel like Jordan is very, I'm not fooling with you because of what you did. And in times of stress and need, you you kind of got to be able to put stuff together. I will say that I do feel like Jordan was unfairly expected to put her feelings to the side, but we'll get to that. But I think Angela is such a good anchor because she really focuses on the relationships and relationships really honestly are very important in this season, which I absolutely love. I really think that the shift to relationships this season as opposed to one person did the season a really, really big favor. Because one of my things with season one is, and this is no shade towards, let me make this clear as well. This is no shade towards any of the actresses. This is no, like, when I have a compliment to give the actresses, I will give the actresses a compliment. If I have an actor that I feel like maybe their portrayal is what hindered a character, I'll say that. But I do want to make it clear, none of this is towards like none of the stuff that might be a critique is towards the actors or the writers because maybe it's a story at the end of the day. So we're just talking about the story because you know how folks on the internet like to be, you know, they like to cut up a little bit and, and that's not what we're here for. I hate when people send hate towards an actor because they did something on a TV show. Like that's crazy to me. But anyway, I do feel like the, the one of the main things in season one that kind of caught me off guard personally and made the story a little clunky at times to me is the fact that Camille was the center of it because Camille is a character who I feel like didn't even want to be there in the first place. And <laughs> so centering the story on someone who doesn't want to be there in the first place made everything else feel very secondary and almost unnecessary because it felt like, okay, well, she's just going to leave and then we're going to, Child, why did I hear it? What was that? I don't know. Lord, let me. All right. Anyway, but having Camille be there, but seem like she didn't really want to be there, just kind of made the story feel like, okay, why am I invested in it if Camille isn't? But I think not having one person that the story relies on as the main character and everything that just happens around them is happening because of them. I think it, I don't think it hindered the season. I do think that it made the tone a little bit more heavy. Whereas in season two, we have heavy stuff, but we have these relationships that we get a chance to fall back on. And Angela 
having the good relationship with Jordan and Jordan and Angela being able to go back and forth. Them looking for Sharice, Angela getting to know Darlitra, Angela trusting Claudette, Claudette and Caden uh, becoming closer after Caden comes back. Us losing Tabitha, like there's always a relationship somewhere in the center of it to me. And I think that's what really, really helps you to focus on this season because you're even Sharice, Sharice being so far away from them makes you feel for her because you're like she's away from her friends she doesn't have anyone here that she cares about that knows her or whatever she is completely by herself but within that we start to see Cherise trust other people like faith you know we see her and faith's interaction and how she becomes friends with her and then it makes it even sadder what happens to faith and that she was this close to being free and even with Queen Savage, we get a chance to see Sharice and Queen Savage go back and forth. So Sharice has an adversary. She has a friend. She has this person in the handler that I never could quite figure out what the relationship was supposed to be. Like one minute it seemed like he kind of like, baby, she was in there cutting up. The handler at times seemed like maybe he was, I don't know, wanted to be friends with Sharice, wanted to take her on as a protege. I'm not 100% sure what was going on there, but that was a relationship. His relationship to Julius, his relationship to Julius's family. Like there was a relationship at every single point. And I, I think when you hear that word, it doesn't always have to be romantic. It can be a friendship. It can be an advisor. It can be a friend. It, I think I said that already, but there's always someone and something to focus on and for us to figure out this is why this character does this whereas in season one sort of Camille's relationship to everybody was the main focus and I think this just helped to give a more dynamic story in my opinion so when Tabitha dies we feel like Tabitha died you know, in season one, even though we know, kind of, we find out that she is just in this pocket dimension or whatever, there's still that feeling that she was over here. Now, I will say, we it does cut deep because Sharice is there and Sharice, like, is a part of what happens. So you do have that, that relationship happening. But in season two, I feel like, because it's not just like a a momentary thing and everyone is around her, we get to see how sad these people are. Even Claudette. Claudette is hurt that Tabitha is gone because they had just started to, maybe not reconcile necessarily, but they were just back in each other's orbit like this. Angela and Jordan just got Tabitha back. Like she just came back and now we're losing her again. And this time... What I think is different from when Sharice was there is that now Tabitha gets to impart a little bit more wisdom. We get to hear her say, that's why I kept you from your full power because I was scared. Like, there's so much that goes into the moment and you get a chance to like feel what everyone is feeling, including Tabitha. And you get to hear the regret in her voice and you get a chance to hear her say, I regret not teaching you how to fully use your power. Like... Baby, brava. I just, I like, I love that scene so much because I think it was representative, really, of where they are. Like, the first time when they lost Tabitha, there was kind of this sense of, of they wanted more retribution for Tabitha than anything else. But now they feel lost because Tabitha ain't coming back. The, it, it ain't no, we just gonna reach in the knife and get Tabitha and whatever else. Mama is gone. We even heard the little the little magic sound when, when, when she died. Mama's gone. And it I, I think that that was a beautiful, beautiful scene. Not only just in the way it was acted out, but really in the way that it shows the depth of trust that they had in her. But I think it also showed that by now, they are a little bit more competent than they were before because when Tabitha was gone the first time it really felt like okay what are we gonna do now it genuinely felt like I don't know which way to go now because we don't have Tabitha we just kind of figuring it out whereas now it feels like we've lost our mentor but we know what to do we just have to mobilize and stand together and stick together to get it done so in that way 
Come on, season two. Let's get sick, man. Now, I'm not going to talk about relationships on this season without bringing up Darlitra and Angela. Listen, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. It was so refreshing, I think, to see Angela and Darlitra bond as friends before anything else happened like it was really nice I don't know how to describe it I don't even know why I don't even know why I'm smiling it was nice to see Angela and Darlitra kind of like have a crush on each other but we you know you know maybe they do maybe they don't but it was nice to see people like like each other as opposed to oh we now am I saying that there's anything wrong with, with people on tv jumping in bed with each other no what I'm saying is that for me, I feel like it added an extra layer of investment in their characters that they liked each other and they were kind of bonding, even if it was low-key trauma bonding, they were bonding with each other. And then we see them kiss. Like when Angela is at her absolute lowest, can't go no more. She is scared. She don't know what it, listen, let me tell you something. I'm tearing up thinking about it. When Angela went outside and the rain started coming down on her and she realized that she was making it rain on herself and she just, it was like she just broke down like, oh my God, I can't even control this. I'm actually doing this. Like what? Like you could tell she just felt so out of sorts and not out of sorts. Out of sorts makes it sound like she just, maybe her medicine was messing with her head. No, my girl was distraught. She was distraught. She was on her last leg and she didn't know where else to go. And I appreciated the fact that Darlitra reciprocated. We got a chance to see that reciprocation. Because, you know, when season two starts, we see Angela giving that tough love to Darlitra, but also being there for her. We see Angela cooking breakfast for her. We see Angela going to the club to go get her. We see Angela taking on that kind of like motherly support role. And it was good to me that we got a chance in the season to see Darlitra say, you had me. I got you. You know what I mean? Like, man, that was just, that was so beautiful to me. Because I just feel like it was such a full circle moment that needed to happen. They didn't become Insta friends. They did, even with her, even with Darlitra and Jordan. Darlitra and Jordan didn't become instant friends. It took Jordan having that vision of what happened to Darlitra and her brother for her to even begin trying to soften up towards Darlitra and it was nice to see Darlitra become a part of the group and I feel like now I now I need to go back and change my opinion on this but I feel like the moment when Darlitra you know decided she would take in the power of the stone but specifically the moment when she you know her and Angela connect like that I feel like that's a moment that Darlitra became a part of the group I feel like she was clearly a part of the group before that but I feel like in that moment, she became a part of their coven. It wasn't just her being there because Angela wanted her there. So I, I just, I love that moment. I am here for it. I 100% stand. And I really hope, I love Mona down, love Momo down. They better not, they better not. That's, that's all I'm going to say. I ain't going to go no further on that, but they better not. <laughs> Because me and Angela and Darlitra, we in a good place right now. And I, I don't need nothing different. I don't need nothing to the contrary. <laughs> and I just want to go back for one quick second. And I really want to say how much I love Sharice interacting with Faith. And I love to watch Sharice making those connections with people. Because one thing about Sharice, Sharice ain't finna stay down too bad. She ain't finna stay down too long. And I think it was really smart of her to make those connections. At first, I was kind of like, Sharice. You don't know if you can trust these people. I really didn't think that she could trust Faith. I really didn't. I did not think Faith was going to be a trustworthy person because, girl, everybody looking out for themselves. Everybody trying to get something done. Everybody got an agenda. But I think Sharice is smart enough to know the difference between someone that's lying to her and someone who is being trustworthy. And plus, later on, oh, let me tell you something. When Sharice used that power, used her power to see who was telling the truth and who wasn't, I said, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mama said, listen, I'm not finna be having this power and you think I'm finna not use it, girl? When she, 
when she got to Javi and she said, are you, is this a trap? I said, ah, yes, come on, human lie detector. I was so excited because I feel like that was one of those moments that whether, wherever Sharice learned to do it, who, you know, whatever, I feel like that was a moment of Sharice's power being a part of her and her realizing its full potential. Do you know how many times someone on a TV show, like a magic-based TV show, has had a power? And I'm like, just use it for this. It's it was like some like Phoebe on Charmed. It would be sometimes I'm like, girl, just have a premonition, just get a vision. Oh my god! And so for Sharice to have used her power in that way to become a human lie detector, I listen. Whoever thought that up brilliant touch brilliant touch and i think that that gives validity to her making those connections at uh obsidian dream was it obsidian dream girl i forgot the name of the club wherever it was i i really really think that makes sense because sharice can't trust them people sharice don't know them folks and everybody, she don't know who the handler got under his control. And then finding out that Queen Savage got her own little thing going on. Baby, listen, that's why she don't like Sharice. <laughs> that's the real reason she don't like Sharice is because Sharice low-key got the same power as her. And she was like, girl, anyway. <laughs> and speaking of Sharice and her power growing, I think the development of the characters is another thing that I really, really, really enjoyed about this season. Because I feel like we get a chance to see Angela grow as a person. I feel like we definitely get a chance to see Darlita grow. Could it? Claudette and Jordan frustrate me because I feel like for the same reason for both of them, I got very, they felt very complacent. It, not complacent. That's not the word I'm looking for. They felt very stagnant at times. It's partly because for Claudette, I'm going to start with her. Claudette is consumed by hatred. Like she is consumed with revenge. She is consumed with a need for it. And at a certain point, and I hope that this does not come across crazy. I was like, girl, you got to let it go. And, I, I'm, I, and I, felt, I felt very strange feeling like that because from her perspective, this big betrayal came from her sister. It came from Tabitha. And when she finds out what Julius did, oh my God, that just like sent her to another level. And I don't, I really struggle with the fact that I was thinking like, girl, you got to let it go because this really did completely derail her life. Like it actually, it really did. It really derailed her life. It really affected her. Them folks took her magic. She felt like, you know, she, she thought she lost her baby. Her, she lost her sister. She lost her friend because they had betrayed her. Like it really did. And that's why it was so I felt like a healing moment almost when her and Caden were talking and Caden apologized for turning her in. What did she say? She said for turning you into this bitter person that you are now. Girl, my heart, my heart melted because you, it, I, I felt like Claudette in that moment kind of felt like I did initially, which was like, girl, what you mean bitter? And then I was like, but she is. She is a bitter person. She's bitter. She's spiteful. She's consumed with hate. She does not know how to process what happened to her as a normal human being wouldn't know how to process what happened to them. And it it's one of those moments where I felt like I grew with Claudette a little bit. And I felt like I got the chance to say, huh, my God in heaven. This really is. And it was a good reflection moment for her. And I feel like that's why Claudette kind of like broke a little bit. Because it was like, God, I finally got the apology. You know, because I think what people don't understand when they get hurt is that, why am I finna cry? My God. Y'all, I'm so sorry. I that 
made me emotional for some reason. I think that goes to show just how like good this show is. I just got very emotional. I think when you get hurt, when you are hurt, sometimes an apology is all you want. It's not even about getting revenge necessarily. Sometimes you just want that revenge because you feel like nobody cares. Nobody's listening. You want that revenge because you feel like I was wronged and this person doesn't even care. But sometimes just a person acknowledging what happened and what they did is all you need. Sometimes it really is all you need. Sometimes just that moment of saying I'm sorry can change your whole life baby listen girl not me up here crying not me finna cry and I feel like that kind of goes maybe the opposite direction with Jordan I'm not sure how I want to phrase that but Jordan is another one that I feel like at times I found myself saying like you gotta move past this but just like Claudette it really was some huge things that happened like you know, Claudette killed Tabitha and took Tabitha away from her. From her perspective, Angela is working, well, I mean, not from her perspective, but Angela is working with Darlitra and Claudette. So, you know, she feels like even Angela is choosing these people, even though Angela sees it, you know, that they need their power to pull together. There were so many times where I found myself being like, Jordan, girl, hush, let it go. But I understand why Jordan was upset. And that's why I said I feel like Jordan had an unrealistic expectation put on her to let things go. Because I do feel like people expected, everybody kind of expected Jordan to just like stop. But it's like, no, Jordan is very much entitled to be upset right now. I wouldn't want to work, look at, look at the person who killed Tabitha either. I wouldn't want to work, look at Darlitra. And that's why I'm, I think it helped for Jordan to go off the rails this season because I feel like they could have easily gone the route of like Jordan just bottling it up and Jordan just like, oh yeah, well, I'll work with it, but I don't really want to. No, Jordan was outspoken. Jordan said, I don't want to do this. Jordan was like, I don't care for this. I don't want to do it. I'm not going to do it. I don't like her. This is why. And I appreciated the fact that she was using her words. She wasn't just being angry. Because I think she could have very easily, Jordan could, in my opinion, very easily turn into Claudette. If we go, if we let her go unchecked and we just don't ever give her any kind of leeway, we're not there for her, we don't listen to her, we don't let her express herself, Jordan could very easily turn into Claudette. Someone with immense power, because to me, Jordan is very powerful. Because baby, the visions... She could eat you up. She could eat you alive. Because I feel like Jordan could probably get to where she could even see what's going on in the present. So she can see what's happening right here, right now. And she can plan her attacks based on that. You know what I mean? Like, giving herself intel. Like, Jordan can be very dangerous. And I feel like Javi and Julius understood that. Because they really understood how her power worked and how beneficial it was. Because he didn't go for Angela. He didn't go for someone else. He, Which, I mean, Angela and Jordan were kind of the only one options. But still, he didn't go for Angela. He went for Jordan. Because he understood the innate ability that she had and how important that was. Baby, stand. Absolutely stand. So, that's why I say I'm frustrated with Jordan. Because I feel like... I feel like Jordan did grow by the end, but I felt like in the middle was just a lot of standing still, kind of. And there was a lot of like screaming and a lot of anger and a lot of the same like, oh, we got it, 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 we got it. And that's why I love when Claudette was like, or who was that? Yeah, it was either Claudette or Sharice. It might have been Claudette and Sharice. I don't remember. That was like, she keep this up, she gonna break. Because baby, that chaotic energy... It was all up and through Jordan. Do you understand me? That chaotic energy was all up and through there. And she was like, okay, we got to do this. If we get this, then we can just blah, 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 blah. And when she did that, I was like, oh, yeah. 
Yeah, mama is this close to cracking. We give her a little bit more time, and I promise you, we we gonna be gone. So as a little bit of a segue, I actually really love the handler's development this season. And I wanted to save him to talk in my villain section, but I think I'm gonna just go ahead and talk about him because I want to, and this is my video. <laughs> But the Handler is another one that I think we see a lot of good development from this season because they could have made him very one-dimensional. They could have just made him someone who was in the slave trade, you know, the magical slave trade, and then pfft, we just move on. But the fact that they show us his history, how he's connected to Julius, the fact that they showed us that he had been a slave himself made it even more infuriating that he was taking people as slaves and I love the fact that we get a chance to humanize him because I feel like it shows just how big of a threat Julius was that he took this man under his wing he basically created the handler he basically gave us this person who is you know taking people like it, it was that was really big to me as a villain because I think it showed that he's not just oh let me kidnap a witch no no he's he had to make a way for himself and it, I'm not I'm not excusing what he's doing because what he's doing is horrible I think it just showed us that he had to make a way for himself and I think unfortunately and this would have been a good time I think to really talk about that if they had had more episodes but I think unfortunately he made money doing what he knew, which was slavery. Because at that time, you know, for especially for a black man, you know, slavery was kind of like the big thing. Even though he's magical, I really think they could have, if they had had more time, they could have gone a little bit deeper into this is the world that he comes from, is where this is the commodity. And so this is just what he does because this is what he has access to and knowledge of. Because I want to know more about how he started gaining favor in the magical community. Like, who was he initially working with? And what was he doing for them that this ended up being his trade? This ended up being who he, you know, who he became. I just, oh God, I want to know how he met Queen Savage. It made me want to know more about him. And I hate that they kind of like... Threw him, not threw him to the side. I don't want to say they threw him to the side. But I think the handler got resolved very quickly. A little unnecessarily quickly. It kind of felt like anime. You know in anime when a character gets, um, is about to die and they start showing us flashbacks of their life? That's what it felt like. It felt very much like that. And I can appreciate that because I, def I feel like that was a reference. I feel like the, the, the writers did that on purpose. In reference to anime, I could be 100% wrong, but that's what it felt like to me. But that decision to humanize him, and even with showing him kind of softening towards Sharice, I feel like that made me want to know more about that character. And baby, all I'm saying is, if y'all want to write a spinoff about the handler, you let me know. Because I'm here. I'm right here. I am right here. <laughs> So y'all, I think I'm going to cut this video up into two parts. And I think it's because number one, I want to let the information in the first one marinate a little bit more. And then that way when we get to part two, it's like, okay, here are the rest of my thoughts. And I may even have some different thoughts by the time I start editing part two, who knows. And then it's partly because I want to give myself more time. Because baby, listen, the way this anxiety has been set up the past couple of weeks, it ain't no telling when this is going to come out. So... <laughs> It ain't no telling. So, <laughs> so I want to give myself as much time as I can to give you something quality, like to put something that I like out because I like the material that I've said. I just want to make sure like I want to edit it good. You know what I mean? Like I want it to look nice. I want it to look, <clears throat> I want it to look a little something, something. <laughs> So anyway, y'all, I will see y'all later for part two. And in part two, in part two, we're going to be talking about the villain of the season and kind of what I felt about him. And then I'll give y'all some of my little nitpicks from the season. 
it's probably going to be shorter in comparison to this one. But I feel like I want to talk about Julius real good. So I will see y'all later. Bye.